आज मध्य रात्रि आठ नवंबर 2016 हजार बजे से पांच सौ और एक हजार रूपए के करेंसी नोट लीगल टेंडर नहीं रहेंगे दिस करेंसी नोट शुड नॉट हैव एग्जिस्टेड एट ऑल दिस शॉक एंड ऑल टेक्निक यू नो ही अनाउंस एट एट ओ क्लॉक फ्रॉम मिड नाइट people had less than 4 hours to react those in power realize today even if they don't admit it that demonetization was disastrous it was a disaster created by a human being welcome to news click on friday evening 19th may 2023 the reserve bank of india announced that it is withdrawing from circulation currency notes of the rupees 2000 denomination the decision will come into effect from 30th september this year we have with us paranjoy guha thakurta well known business journalist who's going to discuss the implications of this decision and most of all we're going to begin with whether it is justified for people to be reminded of the 2016 november demonetization which caused a lot of hardship paranjoy welcome to the show thank you pragya and to answer your question indeed the decision to stop printing or withdrawing completely from circulation 2000 rupee currency notes is very very closely linked to what happened in november 2016 demonetization but before we come to demonetization let's quickly look through what why it happened okay now not too many people are surprised it was in the offing and in fact the reserve bank of india had stopped printing 2000 rupee currency notes right why and then each currency note has a kind of a life cycle and that was getting over so even the 2000 rupee notes that were in circulation several of them you know were sort of had 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 become old and and uh, uh, they, they not it was exactly it's time for them to retire that's correct now you see the total value of uh, 2000 rupee currency notes it had peaked at around uh, in the on the 31st of march it was more than a third it was 37.3% of the total value of all notes in circulation right and from there on the 31st of march 2023 5 years later this number had come down to less than 11% 10.8% to be precise now when you look what was the objective of introducing The this note note yes it is because of demonetization there's no doubt about it now as the reserve bank of india rightly says you don't need them anymore the other notes are the adequate currency notes in circulation the point that should be noted is why are they doing it now and what do they hope to achieve now the official explanation is very clear these notes are no longer being used by people and therefore we don't need them anymore right what is not clear is if everybody if the all the notes that are in circulation they do not get exchanged into lower denomination currency notes by the end of september will there be an extension of the deadline you know this is something we don't know because if you remember when demonetization was announced at 8 pm on the 8th of november 2016 after that for the next few weeks there were like dozens and dozens of notifications signed by the reserve bank of india clarifying doing this doing that absolutely they were completely unprepared for it this time you know having committed many sins in the past they seem to be now repenting for the sins paap ka prayashchit kar rahe so they sort of organized things says you have good on that occasion mr the prime minister of india narendra modi this shock and awe technique you know he right. announces at 8 o'clock from midnight people had less than 4 hours to react this time right. you have 4 months and therefore it can be done in a manner where people don't panic may people may still have to queue up and the, the old memories the terrible memories will come back to them so we don't know whether this deadline will be extended what is also equally important and none of us will be surprised if the 1000 rupee currency notes which were declared illegal 
on the 8th of November 2016, maybe, maybe freshly issued. Now, why do I say it's directly linked to demonetization? Now, hang on, Paranjoy. You know, when the 2000 rupee note was introduced, then you, if I'm not wrong, they had to recalibrate the ATMs. Correct. And it caused a significant amount of hardship. Thousands of crores. Did the, the, the notes serve the purpose they were introduced for? And why could not they just simply go out of circulation through lack Look, of use? This 2000 rupee currency note was itself born in sin. Mm -hmm. And as you rightly pointed out, all the automatic teller, uh, teller machines, the ATMs had to be recalibrated. There are various estimates, once here's 20, 21,000 crore rupees were spent. But the point is, it should not have happened in the first place. That's the most important point. This currency note should not have existed at all. But having introduced it as a kind of a stopgap measure in desperation, because even the government, despite, you know, claiming all the false claims it made, what were the claims? It'll take away, black, I mean, black money will come down. All, all the, the the terrorists Terrorism using for forged currency notes, they, they, their activities will be curtailed. And then later, almost as an afterthought, they're saying, no, this will help it move towards a cashless or a less cash economy. Right. So we moved in that direction. But black money hasn't come down. Because black money was never held in currency notes. Uh, only a minuscule proportion of the illegal currency in the economy was held in currency notes. It was held in jewelry, precious stones, property, and so on and so forth. So this was, um, I mean, it was, it could never have happened. So if introducing it doesn't solve the black money problem, yeah. what problem does it solve by taking it's, it, it away? It solves nobody's problems. I'll come okay. to that. Uh, and, 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 your, and your viewers can surmise what will happen. Uh, but before that, this fake currency notes business. Fake currency notes comprise 0.008% of the total currency in circulation. Okay. And remember, the 2000 rupee note comes out and in no time at all, it is, you know, it is like uh, you find counterfeit notes. That's right. Now, why was it done? Let's go back a little bit in time. Let's go back to Uttar Pradesh of 2017. Note Bandi, 8th of November 2016. Elections to the State Legislative Assembly of Uttar Pradesh take place between the 11th of February and the 8th of March 2017. What happens? At that time, you have the Samajwadi Party and the Bahujan Samaj Party together. And everybody says, you know, why, why, why are they doing this? They want to squeeze the opposition. What happened after that? The BJP sweeps the Uttar Pradesh Assembly elections. Out of 403 assemb uh, Assembly seats, they get over 80%. I mean, never before has, uh, in, the re in recent memory, has uh, uh, certainly never before has the BJP ever won so many seats in UP. Now let's move ahead a little bit. And this it's important for your the viewers of NewsClick to know. There were two banks that, you know, exchanged the old currency notes for new currency notes in a very short period of time. There was a small window given right. to district cooperative banks. And two banks, according to replies uh, given by the bodies like NABAD, that's the National Agricultural Bank or Ru National Bank for Agriculture and Rural Development, cooperative banks come under their, the remit right. of NABAD. So there was the Rajkot District Cooperative Bank, which uh, you know, took the old illegal notes and gave new notes worth 693 crores. And the other one, in just a few days, immediately after demonetization, and the other one was the Ahmedabad District Cooperative Bank, 745 crores. Guess who was the director and the former chairman of this bank? You tell me. The then president of the Bharati Janata Party, our honorable home minister, Mr. Amit Shah. Okay. You, I'm not, I'm giving you facts. You arrive at your own conclusion. Will this process be smooth? I hope so. Was this amount that was exchanged at these two banks in excess of what a bank like that would normally process? That's a difficult question to answer. But 
of all the district cooperative banks across the country, these two banks, they exchange the maximum number of old notes for new ones. And uh, this is, um, I'm stating facts, you can arrive right. at your own, own conclusion, but let me again quote two individuals for you, like them, lump them. The former minister of the Bharatiya Janata Party, who is a minister in the Atal Bihari Vajpayee government, Mr. Arun Shori, has described demonetization as the world's largest money laundering scheme. Right. And the former Prime Minister of India, Dr. Manmohan Singh, in Parliament, he, the month demonetization happened, that's November 2016, he described it as organized loot and legalized plunder. One more quote I should give you. The then Attorney General of India, Mr. Mukul Rohatki, he told the Supreme Court of India on the 23rd of November 2016 that about one-fifth of all the banned currency notes would come back into the system and that would be a windfall gain for the exchequer. Right. E exact words of Mr. Rodgi. We expect 10 to 11 lakh crores in banks. The rest 4 to 5 crore lakh uh, uh, which is being used in Northeast and Jammu and Kashmir to fuel trouble, that same right. terrorist phenomenon. And what happened? Ten months after demonetization, on the last day by which the Reserve Bank of India has to statutorily submit its annual report, what came through? Almost 99% 90, of the, all the banned notes had returned to the system. Into the banks. Well, where? What happened to all the black money? What happened to all the win windfall uh, gains? It, it, it's like, I mean, you were fooling people. Yes, and it but started we saw, at the top. Paranjay, we saw these photographs of stashes of money floating in rivers and ponds, abandoned by roadsides, found in the offices and homes of important people. What about that money? But, but, but how is it that according to the Reserve Bank of India itself, right? Almost 99% of the money came back. What happened? I mean, I mean, if your objective was to, you know, take out black money, what happened? How is it that, uh, you know, this money all came back? Please understand two or three other points. Demonetization hurt the weakest sections of Indian society. Women, children dependent on women, senior citizens, the elderly, Daily wage workers and laborers, see, those who work in construction sites, Absolutely. farmers, small shopkeepers, traders, hawkers, and it hurt them. The, as the, the country's economy shrunk, that's what happened. I mean, with the rate of, I mean, the, the shrinkage happened in terms of a technical recession after the lockdown. But what happened after, uh, after demonetization was that the rate of growth of gross domestic product came down by about roughly 2% as had been predicted by Dr. Manmohan Singh and others. And it hurt who? It hurt the small people the small and medium enterprises, the micro enterprises. And this is going to happen this time also. Who uses cash more? But the it's small 10%. And medium and it's not 86% as the last time. Therefore, the impact on the economy will not be that much. Absolutely. But correct. there will be an impact. Hopefully not too much. Hopefully not too much. Well, Paranjoy, that's what. A lot of shopkeepers, a lot of traders, businessmen will probably not be interested in using that 2,000 rupee currency note no, they, immediately. They have, the from starting from the 23rd of May, the whole of the month of June and July and August and September, to go and exchange these 2,000 rupee currency notes, 20,000 rupees, 10 currency notes at a time. Right. That's not much, is That's that? That's not much. You may have to make several trips. Right. So they will not be interested in taking more of the notes, which means they'll only have to queue up for longer. I hope not, but I don't know. I won't be surprised if in the initial stages there are queues. But let's ac accept it. Who, which are the organizations that use currency notes the most? The small businesses, the small traders, the small shopkeepers, the guys on the street. And look, this 2,000 rupee note was not 
hardly been used. I have a two, two thousand road. Can I? Is it easy for me to pay uh, to buy vegetables, to buy fruits, to pay a cabbie, to pay an auto rickshaw driver? No. It's so you're not saying easy. that the government could actually have waited for this note to simply not be in circulation anymore because they're too old. In any case, the government had stopped printing right. these notes. It was anyway going out of circulation. Now, why now is the question. Yes, and and why? Uh, why was it announced just after the results of the Karnataka elections were announced? Let's I mean, try I mean, to we, guess at some I mean, reason we can why. Guess. I mean, we have uh, major, uh, we have three major states assembly elections are scheduled for later. Uh, in the year, that's Rajasthan and Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh. The next Lok Sabha elections are are are, are uh, some time away. If it worked for the Uttar Pradesh elections in favor of the Bharatiya Janata Party in 2017, are there some people who believe it can work again for them? I don't know. I I can't second guess the devious minds of some individuals who uh, you know decide, but. Uh, my classmate, the governor of the Reserve Bank of India, Mr. Shakti Kant Das, uh, he was in the Ministry of Finance with Note Bandi. Right. And he he had to, I suppose, he had to support it. I mean, he also made some ridiculous uh, suggestions like, you know, putting indelible ink uh, on the fingers of people so that the same person couldn't go again and again to the bank and exchange notes. This is also the same currency note which some media outfits, some journalists said had name a chip. Them. Shame uh, them. What's the name of the journalist? <laughs> Sudhir Chaudhary. Right. There was a he woman was then, who said and there, there was, was a woman. A... Yes, I'm forgetting her name. Please, right. you, you do your homework and why. I will. I, I know. I mean, they, they said there's a little chip there. I mean, uh, it's a bit like Mr. Modi. Initially, you know, he said, you know, we're going to weed out black money. Look, the rich and the poor are both standing in queue. I mean, I mean, he he was actually saying that, you know, I mean, when the government was being criticized, he said that, why was it done in such secrecy? He said people were not prepared. They should not have been prepared. He said their pain is that they weren't given no time to prepare. Right. But in the criticism that the, is the government i mean why was he why did he say it he said the government he was being criticized the government was being criticized for not being adequately prepared for the the exchange the 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 whole transition right you know the atms had to be recalibrated there were long queues there was panic and as as we just mentioned there were dozens and dozens of notifications issued by the reserve bank of india within uh, the a few weeks of uh, the uh, of uh, demonetization being announced on the 8th of November 2016. So this is the kind of thing. In Hindi, he even said, you know, literally said, hang me if I've got it wrong. Why then, for the better part of the last six years, Mr. Modi and the supporters, ardent supporters of the BJP, have stopped talking about demonetization. Well, it's because they, they realize it was a disaster. It was a disaster created by a human being, a human being. Of course, with the help of others, we don't know who uh, who he consulted. Whether it was Mr. Guru Murthy, who's a uh, an independent director of the Reserve Bank of India, gave him this kind of advice. We certainly know that the former governor of the Reserve Bank of India, Dr. Raghuram Rajan, wasn't in favor of demonetization, but whoever gave him the advice, he took that advice. This was the single biggest disruption and economic disruption during peacetime. There was no war going on. Right. So once you inflict such pain. People died standing in line. Of course. And then you say, you know, uh, the, the, the rich are uh, uh, being affected because they are the ones with black money and they are the guys who are standing with their drivers and their servants and their maids and their gardeners in queue, which was actually not true. Well, it's not fair for you to have a policy which makes people go and stand in line. So, Paranjoy, are you saying if the logic of the government then in 2016 and now, if the logic is the same, if the arguments as are the same, then the only difference is the amount of cash in circulation that they are withdrawing now compared to then. And you last time you gave them a deadline which was less than four hours now right. you're giving you a four month long deadline you're preparing people for it because in any case that which was inevitable i repeat my words mm -hmm. that which was born in sin you are amending 
making amendments for it aapne itna paap kiya to paap ka prashchit aap kar rahe you are repenting for your sins so uh, i do agree with the people who have been quoted uh, big wigs in the ministry of finance and the reserve bank of india that it will not have uh, much of an impact on the economy but it will have some impact and it will not let's be a hope. salubrious impact let's hope is there anything to gain from this no there's very little to gain but then you can also argue well, what is there to lose well you know just first the uncertainty the you're, you're correcting the wrongs of the past why why did they do it now right. why did they not do it closer to the elections maybe you know they think public memory is short people will forget what happened six and a half years ago but everybody today isn't this a sure that, way of reminding them what happened uh, but then elections are still some time away more than 10 months away <laughs> almost a year away right so you were asking what is there to be lost a lot the the inconvenience the possible loss of business transactions i was speaking to professor arun kumar earlier he said there might be some job losses or cuts in income for that period so do you foresee you've seen many such government decisions you saw demonetization very closely do you see that the government was again better informed than everybody else and maybe the party in power as well and so they again have a advantage not just over their rivals who are political rivals but over people in a sense okay let me put it this way this present decision will not help very much anybody including Why? small and medium enterprises you're going to be inconvenienced you have to go to the bank to exchange your currency notes right 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 over the next 4 months right one can hope that the negative impact will be relatively little and certainly not like what happened in 2016 17 when the economy was devastated when the poor the lives of the poor were devastated that's what we can only hope for will it lead to better cash reserves for banks no, no, there's more credit these arguments no, are coming out but actually in my personal opinion nothing to do with it those notes shouldn't have been there mm mm-hmm. now you're gradually phasing them out right they're dying right a natural death so you know you're sort of pulling the pipe off the ventilator you know it's going to happen so you're saying now let the Let it happen now rather than wait. Let it happen over the next four months rather than uh, you know sort of keep the keep uh, um, keep keep it going, keep it alive for right some time. And so while the government, while the party in power might think that this decision of the RBI will help it politically, you're not so sure that no, that will happen. No, I don't happen. think so. I don't think so. So it's sort of like <laughs> I, a... I, I I'm not sure. Right. See, see uh, let's accept something else. after 2016 after demonetization they got over 80% of the seats in uttar pradesh mm-hmm. in 2019 there were several reasons including pulwama right but the narendra modi government returned to power right. with a bigger majority right with a higher vote share right so uh, the impact of this economic disruption on politics is you know it's difficult to gauge difficult to ascertain so it's be it may not be a simple kind of a correlation but uh, i think those in power realize today even if they don't admit it that demonetization was disastrous for did the, the economy time. recover was this a temporary that's, shock that's another back. story there was another story after that you know after demonetization came the hurriedly push through goods and services tax right then came the pandemic right then came the lockdown then came the shrinking of the economy the recession so several right. things happened so the economy hasn't actually recovered from the blows it started getting in 2016 november actually the indian economy its rate of growth had been slowing down almost con- continuously every quarter it's been documented from 2016 yes, for, well, february there was from, very from that's right about uh, a year and a half after mr modi came to power uh, it started slowing down and that's and sort of i this... am not so sure whether that, that process has stopped it's in bits and pieces i mean fits and spurts but uh, the economy is not in a good shape at all unemployment figures are not available one estimate says that it's the highest in 45 years the 
immediately, you know, the rate of growth of inflation had, I mean, inflation had shot up. Mm -hmm. It's mitigated a bit, but, uh, you know, it's like the car was traveling at 100 kilometers an hour. It's now slowed down, it's now traveling at 40 kmph. But the right. prices are still going up, especially the prices of food items, food right. inflation, and last but not the least. And this is, I mean, demonetization has also contributed to it. The gap between the rich and the poor. The, the inequalities of income and wealth in this country. I mean, I think there are several economists of different uh, ideological persuasions who are today convinced that India is the most unequal country in the world. And certainly demonetization had, was one of the factors, not the only factor, but one of the only factors that contributed to this kind of gross inequality of income and wealth, which is prevalent in, in India, India today. at present, yes. You know, Paranjoy, last question. So we cannot predict or foretell what a government or a political party is thinking about a decision taken by any organization, anybody. But is it possible that where they might be thinking that this will help them, the withdrawal of the 2000 rupee currency, it might actually end up hurting them? I cannot answer that question. I do not know. All right. I mean, I'm not a fortune teller. I wonder if Mr. Amit Shah also knows the answer to your question or whether Mr. I'm Modi saying, knows the answer. I asked or this. or uh, our Honorable Finance Minister uh, well, Nirmala Sitharaman. Right. I ask this only because you say there, would, there was an impact on employment, there is a continuing decline in the economy, and this is not a measure that will help. So then it can only hurt. Of course. And, and you know, the surveys that have taken place in Karnataka, I'm not saying Karnataka represents the whole of India, but voters were asked why they voted the BJP out. Right. I mean, it's not merely because the government was corrupt and it was inefficient, but what were the issues that matter? Unemployment. Right. Inflation. Right. Corruption. These were the big issues. Right. So if this had an impact on the electorate of Karnataka, we'll have to wait and watch what happens in the coming elections in Rajasthan and Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh, and more importantly, the next general elections. Right, Paranjoy. Thanks very Thanks, much for Parker. joining us. And this is definitely something to keep watching. Thanks very much for watching NewsClick. And we'll be following this issue more. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and on our YouTube channel. Thanks again for watching.